We are going to discuss now about the diversity of life and how we have on this fortunate planet living organisms up to 1.8 million species to the uh, according to the research data it is said that 20 million species is there in this earth. So, this is this planet is fortunate to only to have life in this planet and the diversity is enormous. We have uh, organisms which are animals, which are plants and then we have microorganisms like that. So, based on the diversity of plant, uh, plants and animals and other microorganisms in this planet, we need a, a particular uh, ta taxonomical device to understand these organisms for which uh, there are various classification methods adopted by different people. Now, let me take let me take you to a journey of the various kingdom concept in the diverse uh, the diverse animals and plants of the world. So, let me talk about from the uh, Aristotle still uh, Robert H. Whittaker's system of classification. We are going to discuss about the uh, various organisms which have been categorized accordingly. So, let me begin with the Aristotle's two kingdom concept. So, in Aristotle's two kingdom concept, He just divided the world's organisms into plantae and animalia, plantae and animalia. And he also categorized the uh, warm in animals, warm blooded animals and cold blooded animals. His student Theophrastus categorized these plants into herbs, shrubs and trees, whereas the animals were divided into um, uh, land dwellers, water dwellers and uh, air dwellers. So, that was uh, Theophrastus his students classification, but anyhow this is called as two kingdom concept. So, we are going to discuss about the various kingdom concept where we are going to arrive at R H Whittaker system. So, we have to we have to understand whether uh, is R H system can be adoptable by the all the countries, but and then we will come to a conclusion which system is the best for uh, the taxonomical classification. So, now let me con take you to the three kingdom concept. In three kingdom concept, the kingdoms were divided by Haeckel, wherein plants, animals according to plantae and anima, uh, along with plantae and animalia, he included protista. That was Haeckel's three kingdom concept. Now, let me take you to the four kingdom concept. This was designed by Copeland in which he said the world's can, organisms can be divided into plantae, animalia, protista and monera. Protista and monera. The four kingdom concept by Copeland divided the world's organisms into four. This was by Copeland Plantae, Animalia, Protista, and Monera. Then we have to talk about the last kingdom which we call it as five kingdom concept acceptable in the colonial countries. The countries ruled by British, we follow this system of classification where we are using this Robert H. Whittaker's five kingdom concept. In the five kingdom concept, Robert H. Whittaker has classified along with the four what we have been classifying along with these one, two, three, four, fungi has been added along with the four. So, now that we have arrived at five different kind of kingdoms that we have today. So, that is kingdom Monera. So, when, when you go up the hierarchy, the least complex animal, least complex organism is Monera because Monerans are unicellular and prokaryotic animals. Then comes the Protista. Protista are unicellular eukaryotic animals. Then we come when in the hierarchy we have to place next to Monera next to Protista is fungi. Fungi is multicellular and eukaryotic. So, the next 
complex organisms are plants and animals planting and animalia we are indeed very complex animal complex uh, animals are plants and animals so as in the hierarchy now that we have seen that monera protista then fungi fungi is followed by plantae and animalia we call man as a highly complex animal so we are on the top of the hierarchy we claim that we we are on the top of the hierarchy because we have where lower forms like uh, unicellular uh, uh, prokaryotic forms so pre, pro, as you all are aware that prokaryote means false nucleus they neither have nuclear membrane nor do they have a nuclear uh, me membrane nucleoplasm just that the uh, genetic material is embedded in the cytoplasm protoplasm straight away so they do not have a double wall nuclear membrane hence they are called prokaryotes so prokaryotes include mostly the uh, least complex bacteria so they are the pioneers of this earth as we are aware that the heterotrophs and uh, you know, autotrophic bacteria are the pioneers of this earth so this comes the monera then we talk about protista the protistans are unicellular and eukaryotic animals so these uh, uni uh, unicellular eukaryotic animals uh, include diatoms dinoflagellates uh, then chrysophytes mostly they are the producers of the aquatic system so very vital because uh, they are the producers of the aquatic system and uh, as we move on we come to the multicellular uh, eukaryotic form which is fungi the fungi are indeed saprophytic so when we talk about monera we said it they are uh, autotrophic or it can be heterotrophic then protistans can also be autotrophic as well heterotrophic then here comes the fungi which is multicellular and these multicellular organisms are saprophytic they are very essential for mineral recycling then comes the plantae the plantae again are autotrophic animals and these plantae are going to uh, be all the heterotrophs rely on this uh, pl plantae for their mode of nutrition so here the heter animals depend on these plants because they are autotrophs and they feed the entire world then comes in the last hierarchy we have animalia the animals are heterotrophs and multicellular very complex animals and here we have a up in the hierarchy mammals and in the mammals we have placental mammals like we are uh, we come under placental mammal in the placental mammal man homo sapien claims himself as the highly complex organism in this world so for uh, let me talk about monera the monerans as we have already seen they are the pioneers of this earth they would have colonized the earth here for the first time here uh, during the across the evolution of earth so here this monerans are protist uh, sorry prokaryote prokaryotic in nature and they could be unicellular and least complex animals we call them as least complex animals because they are devoid of organelles they do not have any specialized organelles with them hence we call them as least complex animals and this monera can be divided into uh, archibacteria and new bacteria that we will see it later in the, uh, the call was six kingdom concept so this is robert whitaker's five kingdom concept which is accepted in colonial countries but american system of learning will not accept robert h whitaker as robert robert h whitaker system depends on nutrition the primary factors like wherein this study is based is nutrition cell division cell division reproduction etc whereas the carl woos system as i have told you about carl woos system uh, this is a six kingdom concept which will not be accepted by uh, which uh, the parent the five kingdom concept will not be accepted there so there americans believe in six kingdom concept let us look at what is american system of concept so americans will not take these factors into consideration rather they depend upon the dna analysis rather than this nutrition self cell, cell division reproduction they depend on 
DNA analysis and based on in DNA analysis, they have categorized the uh, world's organisms into six kingdoms. So, these six kingdoms are uh, widely accepted in America and these uh, six kingdom is further narrowed down to three domain concept. The three domains are, this is also by Carl Woese based on DNA analysis. These three domains could be eukaryota, eubacteria and archaea. If you want to understand about the eukaryote and uh, the eubacteria and the uh, archaeobacteria, we have to understand about the Calvo's six kingdom concept first. Then after underst our understanding about six kingdom concept, then we can further understand what is the reason behind him bifurcating, he bifurcated Monira into two different that is eubacteria and archaeobacteria. So, this Monira was further divided into eubacteria and archaeobacteria based on as I said DNA analysis and that led to the formation of six kingdom concept. Then he further narrowed down to three domain concept in which the, he, what he had done is he the same bifurcation of Monira stands same wherein eubacteria separate archaeobacteria separate, then he clubbed all the other eukaryotes, he clubbed all the other eukaryotes including fungi, protista, plantae, animalia into one which is as eukaryota. So, this is also a, a new perspective wherein the three domain concept also is nowadays accepted for research publications. So, we have now uh, the widely accepted five kingdom concept, then the reason behind uh, classifying five, uh, five kingdom into six kingdom based on uh, DNA analysis, then we also have three domain concept also by Carl Woese. If you want to understand further about uh, what is uh, the rationale behind uh, uh, Carl Woese bifurcating uh, eubacteria and archaeobacteria from Monira, you have to wait for the next class on the diversity of life.